What's up guys, I am Ian and in today's video, I mentioned that things are different between different cameras. The result will differ slightly from camera to camera. But first, I just got back from a place called Kennedy Meadows with some friends in Bjorn. And some of you, rightfully so, might be wondering what these are. Well, these are protective sleeves. Oh yes. And these will be a part of a future video where you and I will go over all of the necessary equipment for a day of capturing footage as media at a racetrack. But now we go to the age old saying of ISO adds noise. Okay, but how much noise? And how much is too much? And what's better for a final product? Higher ISO and less fixing in post or lower the exposure internally inside your cameras and then raise all the levels in post. Does it even matter? Is there any difference between these two? I'll be honest, these are thoughts that I have often had that uh, end up leaving almost as quickly as the money in our accounts as soon as we get paid to go and pay bills. It's there and then it's gone. <laughs> And so today we're gonna to be testing these two different scenarios. Now, obviously the end result will differ slightly from camera to camera. But for reference, today we're gonna to be using my Sony a7R5 with the 16 to 35 G Master lens, also from Sony. And right now we are on the top level of a parking garage during an overcast day. So it's pretty even lighting, but we're gonna be able to see a range. Now that we're about to go downstairs to the bottom level, what I'm gonna to try to do of the exact same shots. But I think before I spend any more time in front of the computer, oh, well, that was uncalled for. I'm gonna take these off. Oh. All right, let's get into it. So first up, the raw shots. Here they are. You can clearly see that one is far more properly exposed than the other. And if we go to the next one, where I simply apply the correct exposure in post-production, as well as the lens correction, because it does affect everything in post-production, we can now see that the histograms are a lot closer lined up. There's minute differences in the shadows and everything, but in terms of the overall image, these are looking a lot closer. And honestly, when we go into 300%, we can see that there isn't really much difference. And that's at 300%. So obviously at full screen, no one's gonna be able to tell. And we maintain this theme as we go into our second shot as well. You can see very underexposed with one of them and the other is pretty normal. And then when we equal out the exposure, and the lens correction is looking a lot closer. And if we go in at 300%, in the highlights of those headlights, you can't tell at all. There's no difference. Now, even though this pattern does continue in this third group of photos, matching everything up with the histogram, doing a basic exposure setting, plus you know shadows, highlights, whites, all of those, and even going into the detail module and putting in a little bit of help there, between the ISO shot and the underexposed post shot, we're actually able to see only slightly when it's at 300% that in the post-production, the noise is looking a little blockier, but that's it. And you have to look for it. Other than that, you're not gonna be able to tell. And then finally putting everything together with lens correction, exposure, the basic settings, detail, and I even put one of my own presets on this well, at 100%, you can't tell anything, and at 300%, I'm sorry, but you still cannot tell. So my verdict for at least daylight, you're fine. These were shot at a range of between like 200 and 2000 ISO to get proper internal exposure. And in order to get the right exposure balance from post-production to the internal correctly shot photos, I was boosting exposure anywhere between uh, 1.6 and 2.2 stops in Lightroom. So the fact that even with that amount of boosting in just the exposure setting, we're not really able to see that really any difference. That's great. That is just daylight though. Let's go downstairs. And honestly, once we're here and once we're looking at these photos, we can go even faster than what we were just doing at the top level because after boosting exposure going to 300%, there's no difference, not just in exposure, but also in basic tab. And now even when we go into the third section, even on this, the the noise in ISO is actually a little more speckled. It's like more randomized, but that's it. And it's only at 300%. And once again, there is essentially no difference between these at face value. 
and I'm talking all of these internally were shot at 2500 ISO. I generally don't like to shoot past that unless it's in a fully controlled environment. That's just a personal thing. But for 2500 ISO and then matching the exposure values in post-production for the underexposed ones, which were shot somewhere around 400 and boosting anywhere from two and a half to 3.2 stops. The fact that these shots at full screen, there is no clear difference is astonishing. So final thoughts. I would say it's gonna be safer to get it right in camera because there's number one, there's less to do in post. So less work at the computer. You also have more control in your camera. Uh, you can see everything just right there. You know if you need to fix it or not. It's just better to take care of it there on location. But honestly, as you just saw, you don't have to. You can get these underexposed. Now again, I was shooting on an A7R5. So it's a full frame sensor. That's a 61 point something megapixel camera. That's a lot of information in each file. So I understand this might be different from camera to camera, just like I said earlier. However, from what I'm seeing, I dare say I'm comfortable now going past 2,500, even in controlled environments. You know what? I'm cool going into the threes, maybe even four thousands. That's not something I normally do. But after seeing this, I now have my question answered. And hopefully now you do too. So that is all that I have for you today, guys. And I hope that I see you on the next video. Take care.